Uh, very good evening to you. Welcome to our dual cast uh, on radio and on television. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Talk Radio Live on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Now, if you want to get in touch with the programme today, all you've got to do is go on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter and you can watch the show. And uh, my friend who, of course, is my roving reporter, Ricky, Ricky the Rover, uh, is out and about. Let's find out exactly where Ricky is today. Ricky, can you hear me? I can, James, yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I'm supposed to be outside Frogmore Cottage, but after all these renovation works costing apparently £2.4 million, I thought we'd only go to a work site. So I'm outside Buckingham Palace this evening after Harry and Meghan have said that they're not going to have more than two children due to environmental reasons. Well, I think that's a very good idea. Why anybody would want more than two children, I really can't imagine. Anyway, tonight on the show, we'll be breaking the news on Boris Johnson. We'll be breaking the news on Alistair Campbell. Uh, Harry and Meghan we just talked about. Uh, Amazon's Alexa. Cathedral golf. Can it be any more boring, I wonder, than ordinary golf? Probably the most boring game in the entire world. And atheist parents. All that to come right here on James Well Breaks the News. And as I say, if you want to get in touch, Ricky will tell you how. Uh, you can contact us at tw uh, Talk Radio on Twitter, uh, Talk Radio's Facebook live page, or on YouTube live stream as well. And if you've got Periscope, you can contact us there as well. Now, let me introduce you to uh, this evening's panel. They are Tom Harwood, reporter from Guido Fawkes. Uh, they are Dahlia Gabriel from uh, Novara Media, who is the editor. Did I get your name right? You did, it's yeah. a really nice... <laughs> actually, it's not a real name at all, but her <laughs> other name is more difficult to pronounce. Um, so she chose an easy one. That's quite good, because this isn't my real name either. Oh, well, what's your real no, name? No, huh? I'll tell you after. I'm going to tell you now. Uh, and over here, I wonder if any of you, uh, like me, uh, were listening to the radio, watching the television, buying music. Uh, here's a man who's had... Probably more people scream at him than anyone else other than Ricky on the show tonight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Van Day. Uh, there's loads of rapturous applause. I could hear it in my cans, but not so much out here. Uh, and I asked my two younger members of the panel if they knew who he was, and they both looked at me blankly. But, of course, David... Sorry, David. Um, I'll, I'll talk to you, not just about you, in a moment. Uh, David Van Day, of course, one half of Dollar... But um, it's a long time ago, David, isn't it? It's actually, yes, it's a, it's a long time ago. You know. It's nearly, it's nearly well, it's not quite as old as you. No, it's OK, there's no need to be rude. <laughs> it's yeah. 40 years ago. And in fact, this year, uh, they're producing uh, a Greatest Hits uh, tribute album. Really? Yeah. Now, uh, you're not so, only... You're interested. <laughs> no, no, we'll come back to that. I was yeah. looking at the hair, and it's not moved at all since the 80s, has it? No, it's, it's, it's all my own. I just moved it around. Really? And, yeah. and it's looking good, <laughs> looking good. Now... Uh, you were a burger, a burger salesman for a while, weren't you? Because that made... Uh, do you see yes. that? The set's wobbling. It's like an old TV show called Crossroads. You see that? Yeah. Uh, you, you sold burgers on the south coast. That's true, in Brighton. Yeah. Yeah. Downtown Brighton. You're yeah. not doing that anymore? No. Okay. But I didn't... I, I actually enjoyed doing it. I, don't, I didn't yeah, see no, it no, I know. such a bad I know. thing. I know. Uh, but now you're going to politics. Tell me why. Well, um, I suppose... I, I like helping people. I like to solve problems. And I like engaging with people. And as you've just said, 40 years ago, with a career, I, do, I still do uh, shows. Uh, but I just wanted to feel current. I want to engage with the young people as well. So, uh, I wanted, I so I wanted to feel significant in today's world and, um, and I sit at home moaning about things and politics, get up and do okay. something about but it. You are, so I got uh, myself selected yep. and then elected. You are a Conservative councillor yes. for Thurrock in Essex? Uh, for Averley and Uplands Ward right. in Thurrock. In yeah. Thurrock, OK. Yeah. And do you have aspirations now to be a Member of Parliament? Well, somebody once said, actually, I think it was uh, like Matthew Parrish, who said anybody who walks into Parliament, they all want to be uh, uh, Prime Minister. Yeah. Well, not me. I'm ha very happy where I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, certainly not. Did you say? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, not for me, no. no. Really, why not? I think, why, why, why not be a Prime Minister? Oh, goodness, no. I like my, I like my downtime too really? much. Really? Yeah. But you could make a difference. <laughs> I think there's many ways you can make a difference. I don't think you have to be Prime Minister. Yeah. And I like also having a bit of independence and freedom as well. Would you want to be an MP or not? 
No. Okay. I like being that to the Tom, right. Prime Minister or not? No, I shouldn't think so. Okay. Much more fun on the outside. Right. Uh, the first topic we're going to talk about tonight is how wonderful Boris, as our new uh, Prime Minister, is. He's doing a great job. Obviously, everybody here on the panel agrees. I can see that. Uh, if you've got any thoughts, <laughs> then uh, don't forget Facebook us, tweet us, Twitter us, tweet us, and YouTube us. On Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, get in touch, let us know what you think and uh, Ricky will read it out. And listen, just before anybody says anything, being rude about me, this is my radio show as well. So it's going out live on the radio and we'll be here till 10 o'clock. You won't. It's OK. Uh, we'll be on the television till 8 and then on the radio until 10. Um, I, I could not believe how rude the Scots were. And I gave them a telling off on the radio the other day and I had a lot of Scots ring in and apologise because they didn't agree with the SNP. Dahlia, what do you think about this? What did the Scots say about you? I missed this Not me, thing. no, about, Bo <laughs> <laughs> about Boris. They love me. Um, the Welsh and the Scots love me. Uh, no, they booed Boris. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was incredibly rude to boo this country's prime minister. I mean, people have people didn't get a chance to to have their say at the ballot box because as we know Boris was elected but by 0.2% of the But that's how we do it in this country. If it had the, been if it had been labor it would have been the same. And so I guess people have to find other ways to express their disagreement, to express their political voice because they didn't get a chance to do that at the election and we had the demo at the at the, yeah, but the, the weekend. At the first welcome in going at, to Scotland Wednesday. you would have thought he might got they might have been a bit more generous. Do you know what interests I mean, me? I don't, I don't think we should be talking down the people of Scotland that much. Did you see the crowd? It was tiny. There were barely 50 people there outside yeah, yeah. Butte House, the yeah. headquarters of the First Minister of Scotland. If they could only get 50 tired SNP activists out there to do, I think that when this I, is not as unpopular as people When think. I said that on the radio the other evening, we were flooded with calls from Scotland saying, that does not represent us. Mm. And we don't want people to think we were rude and to this so country. And so often people think that the SNP is synonymous with Scotland. Yeah. But they didn't win the last election. They didn't win a majority in Scotland. They lost the independence vote. This is a party that doesn't represent Scotland. And it's so important to talk about Scotland as a unionist country, Dahlia. because that's the majority. Well, we have still had a lot of dissent with, to Boris Johnson's premiership, and mm. I don't think it creates a very good, healthy, democratic culture to kind of talk down to and dismiss people who use exercise their democratic right to protest. We also had um, the demo on Wednesday which marched from Brussels Square to Westminster that had thousands of people on it and not just thousands of people but thousands of people that as someone who's been on demos many times before it looked nothing like your classic demo. It was teenagers, it was like young people who had come out to occupy the streets because they felt like this premiership did not represent them and as I said yeah. point two percent of the population Do they not understand? Maybe, maybe you, did because not of, vote, yeah. oh, well, is, that's all that oh, voted okay, for him okay. and a very demographically narrow group of people mm. voted for them as well. But listen I'm really happy to see that young people are getting involved in politics because mm -hmm. I don't think enough people have and I think people are frightened of the word politics and I'd like to young change it to life. Young people hugely engaged yeah. in politics. Well that's good hugely. but people have to understand that the system in this country is that you vote for the party not for the person. Maybe we need to change but that. But the system in this country is also that you can take to the streets to protest if you're not happy with what's going on. But we Surely. also have empirical that data there? that we can look at. Boris Johnson has a wide lead in the polls. He's 10 points ahead of Labour. Just today there was a poll that showed Jeremy Corbyn was third place behind Boris Johnson and don't know in terms of preferred Prime Minister. So yes, people have a right to protest, but also we in the media have a right to have, have a responsibility to put it in context and show that yes, some people are out on the streets. All some right. people don't okay. like it, but they're not representative. I Personally, I think there's a, a great feeling of optimism since Boris became Prime Minister. Dahlia pulls a lovely face and that says a, a million things and we'll come back to you in a moment. Uh, Ricky, what are people saying on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook? Well, we'll, we'll kick off with uh, Heddy who wants to know why William Shatner's on the panel. Uh, I, I don't know either. I just turned up. Uh, JFK is asking, hey guys, Boris wants 500,000 to 1.3 million illegal immigrants to have citizenship Anyone else feel that we're being distracted with Brexit to flood us with third world migrants? That's a very 
racist, nasty sort of comment. And honestly, don't some people actually read and follow what's going on in the world? I also don't know where this is from. I don't know if any of the panel have seen any of this No, today. it's just somebody mouthing off about Brexit and quite frankly, they've got hold of the wrong end of the stick. Dahlia would like to say something. I mean, I think that this is the exact kind of rhetoric that has been fermented by people like Nigel Farage and people like Boris Johnson. And the reason I made that face when you said there's a great deal of optimism in the country... I don't think you're feeling particularly optimistic if you're one of the w Muslim women who wear hijab, who was called, who was dehumanised and made to sound, who was called a letterbox and, and objectified in that way. I don't think you'd feel that way if you are a gay person who was called a bum boy by our pri by our prime minister. I don't think you'd feel like that that way if you were a black person who are was called a, a pickaninny with face? watermelon yeah. smiles. That's not a cause for optimism, oh. and okay. that's why oh. that's why so many of the people that have come John, out since. We have heard these sneers time have been and time again. Smith, things that were it. written in the he last century, things he that have it. been wrenched from context. What's in the terms context of, of calling black people? He, he was writing a satirical piece in the style of it's a colonial, in the style of a colonial newspaper it's about not, Tony Blair funny. going to other countries. It's not this funny. is, but do you know it's what? That was written when... twelve years before he became mayor of London. David in Labour, I mean, if I leave a word in any way, you might as well Sorry, can we ignore this caricature? He's very, very. Optimistic. It's He's not very funny. optimistic. And it's not funny when you're my one wife of the sells her product abroad. Right, okay. And a lot of people okay. say to us, they say to me, why haven't you put your uh, reunion jack uh, on the product, on yeah. the packaging, when we're selling things abroad? I feel, I In, it, out of sight of the UK, the UK is very much admired. And uh, so, let me, uh, and Boris let talks me, it up. Right. For, I, agree, I agree with you, yeah. but I'm worried that Dali is in the minority, a bit like the Labour Party okay. at the moment. Um, <laughs> so what I, what I actually think we should say, I was a great Remainer until recently. And then when the Euro elections started, I thought, what a lot of twaddle, completely undemocratic and completely stupid. So now we're a great nation. Britain has let people come in here, encouraged people to come in here from all over the world. We are a nation made up of people from every part of this planet. And I think we should leave. We should do good deals with our nearest neighbours. We should be happy with them. We should encourage them. But we are a better country. We, we should be ruling the world again, shouldn't we, David? And that's what we needed. We needed someone like Boris to talk it up a bit. Yeah. We, I mean, we didn't have enough politicians talking Britain up. Everybody putting it down all the time. But I know for a fact outside of the UK that people, as I say, they're all saying, put the Union Jack on your brand. Let everybody know it's British. It's a great mark. Do you know, I could see Prime Minister Van Day in the <laughs> distant future. Well, look, you know, look, if, uh, if Donald Trump can become president, a reality TV show yeah. star, it's yeah. chances for you. Right, even. OK. <laughs> yes, well, yes, I have been in Big Brother. OK, you're right. Let's talk about another very uh, uh, an entertaining guy, a, a chap who used to come in quite regularly on my radio show late at night and make coffee. Uh, Alistair Campbell. Ah. Now, Alistair Campbell has been booted out of the Labour Party. Well, he said he doesn't want to vote Labour, doesn't want to be involved in Labour anymore because they've become really extremist. Alistair Campbell actually controlled the image of Labour when they were electable. Dahlia, do you think it's a bit unfair that he's been treated this way? Well, I mean, I personally am happy to see the back of Alistair Campbell, and I'll tell you why. Alistair Campbell... Um, developed a sexed-up dossier that cost the lives of a million Iraqis. Alistair Campbell instituted a kind of politics that is based on spin, that is based on lies, that is based on selling people one image so that you can get away with, with you know, um, getting things under the rug that you know people wouldn't want to vote for. And quite frankly, we, and we were discussing this earlier, I think what's happening right now, and this happens every few decades, is the centre ground of politics is collapsing. Right. And I think an attempt to try and reconsolidate that centre, the kind of politics represented by Alistair Campbell, represented by Hillary Clinton, represented by Theresa May, by David Cameron, mm. it's a waste of time to try and bring that back because the systems they inputted have failed the majority okay. of people. I, I the just, question is, which just, way do we go? All right. I to would the just far like right to invite, or to the, to the right. left? I would just like to invite Alistair Campbell, if he wanted to come on and uh, put his side of the story, we'd love to have you, Alistair, come on the show. Do you think that Jeremy Corbyn is electable as Prime Minister in this country? Never. I think that the question of electability, the conservative ideas of what is electable has been proven wrong time and time again. I think anything can what, happen in an election. Yeah. And I think and I Foot? think that anything that can happen... Can I please... But I too far. Uh, can I please well, finish yeah, what I was saying? Thank you. Um, the 
Um, what is electable has radically changed. If you look at Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, if you look at Bernie Sanders, if you look at Jeremy Corbyn becoming leader of the Labour Party, mm. if you look at Donald Trump, these are Are we are getting people. to a yes, Dahlia, or a no? Well, is I, mean, he... I mean, of course, I'm, it's, it's obviously by default that I believe that Jeremy yeah. Corbyn is electable. But he's doing but terribly in the explain. polls at the moment. Well, I think that when Jeremy Corbyn does not have a chance to present his ideas, that is when, and is the, the, le- the media look, is mm. completely consumed. I, 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 no, 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 no. Whereas if you I've, look in the general I, election, hang on a minute, Dahlia. Just can't. Can, I, can look, I finish Dahlia, what I'm just a minute. I've the, asked Jeremy Campbell, uh, Jeremy Campbell, Jeremy uh, might make a good prime minister, Jeremy Corbyn, to come on this program time and time and time again on my radio show, and he never even replies. He doesn't even have the courtesy to because reply. Because he's busy touring the country, building because for a green he's industrial frightened revolution, frightened of putting his foot in it, building for a green, building for a green industrial revolution, canvassing and building social clubs and infrastructure and political education networks throughout the country, that is much more in Don't touch explode. with the grassroots than appearing on radio shows. And furthermore, well, when you look in the last, when you, get, when you come to the last, the of when you come to the last general viewers. election, when you look at the last snap election, when he had the opportunity to present his Tom. vision for the country, he did far <laughs> better than anyone else yeah. thought he would do. Well, so, c- comparing, yeah, but, comparing Jeremy Corbyn to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, who won a primary within a deeply, deeply democratically held seat. This isn't someone who won over an electorate that was anything other than far left. You're comparing her, uh, him to, to uh, Bernie Sanders, who lost against Hillary Clinton, perhaps the least electable American politician that you could possibly think of in today's political context. You're comparing him to Theresa May, someone who I think any other Labour leader would have absolutely ridden roughshod Guys, over Guys, we're going to take election. a commercial break. We're going to take a commercial break. I'd like to know what you think. Is Jeremy Corbyn electable now? or not, or do you think everybody is turning towards Boris? Uh, David Van Day is uh, yes. promising to sing a song a bit later on Don't as well. Uh, the, YouTube, the Twitter <laughs> and Facebook is how you can get in touch with us here on Talk Radio and on Talk Television, I suppose you could say as well. And Ricky's got lots to tell you about as well. Don't go anywhere. Back in a couple of minutes.
Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to The James Ware Show, Breaking the News. This is a new TV show as well as a radio show as well with Talk Radio. And uh, my guests on the panel tonight are Tom Harwood from uh, Guido Fawkes, uh, Dahlia Gabrielle, who is the editor of Novara Media, and, of course, celebrity and conservative councillor, heartthrob of the 80s, one half of dollar, Mr. David Van Day, possibly a prime minister of the future. Uh, welcome back all. Now, listen, uh, we were talking about uh, Alistair Campbell um, and we we're talking about the Labour Party. Uh, is it electable? Isn't it? Uh, we're going to come on and talk in a moment about Harry and Meghan. I'm sure you'll like to talk about that. Uh, let me go to my uh, roving reporter, Ricky, who is outside Buckingham Palace. He was supposed to be outside Frogmore Cottages. Yeah. Obviously, he's not very royally orientated. Otherwise, he'd have gone to the right place. But still, never mind. But James, um, there are tractors everywhere. I'm not going to somewhere where this JCB is getting in the middle of the shot. All right. Uh, okay. Well, if you feel safer outside Buck House, that's fine. Um, what have you got? Well, I'll be absolutely honest with you, James. It's an absolute cesspit of hatred. There's a lot of racism, <laughs> if anything, actually going on on the show tonight. So, uh, honestly, I'm actually going to read anything out. You have to come back to me because it's actually just full of racists. Really? So, honestly, honestly, not worth the time reading it. Back you to see. You. Let me, before we go on with this, why, Dale, come to you, why, why has Brexit brought out the worst in everybody? So I want to say this first of all in the context of I have long been a sceptic of the European Union from the position of the left. There is a traditionally leftist position, um, what, how they treated Portugal, how they treated Greece. That is, you know, corporate bullying, essentially. So... In a radically different context, I could see myself voting to leave the European Union for many different reasons. I, but for some reason, the, the, the Brexit campaign was fought in a framing that scapegoated immigrants, that drove buses around with, you know, long lines of, of um, faceless, objectified people and presenting them as a threat to people's everyday um, way of life and appealing to those kind of deepest mm. fears and racisms that was not invented by Brexit. This has existed long before, you know, if you think about Enoch Powell's River of Blood speech, um, that sort of crystallises exactly the kind of anxiety. Do you think we're a racist that, nation? I think that racism is embedded in so many of the institutions, and, and it's not something that is specific to Britain. It's a kind of ordering logic of our world in so many parts of the country, in so many parts of the world. But do you think, I mean, world. racism, quite often people think of racists as being fair-skinned people. Is that fair? Well, it depends on your context. So, for example, if you look in India, for example, they have a caste system that is racialized. It's a kind of racist. Racism is a tool. It looks different according to space and time and historical context. But I think in this country, it looks very much like white supremacy. And okay. I don't think that's controversial. Do really. you? We'll probably get even worse uh, bits now. But uh, on Facebook, Twitter and uh, YouTube, where you can see this program as well as hear it, Give us your thoughts on what Dahlia said. I'd be interested. Now, um, Harry and Meghan have decided to only have two children. I think that's a great idea. I don't see why anybody want more than two children at all, uh, as this planet is getting ever smaller and ever more crowded. Um, but they're doing it for green reasons. Now, my views, you know, well known. It's all this climate change. Bring it on. Get warmer. That's what I say. Uh, Tom. To me, this is just Malthusianism. Um, if anyone, so what does that mean for if those people aware like me of, who... um, of, of Thomas Malthus, who was right. someone who believed that as soon as the Earth got to reach one billion people, there wouldn't be enough resources to go around, there'd be mass famine, starvation, <laughs> hunger, war, deprivation. Huh? We're a planet Same now sort of, person of seven that billion that If you people. went faster than 80 miles an hour, you'd die. Exactly. Yeah, or yeah, even with the Flying Scotsman, 30 miles an hour. We've yes. had these naysayers and doubters for years. But actually what we've found is that as we've grown to have uh, uh, more people... People in this country, what we've had more ingenuity. What, what we've had if a Spanish flu comes along? Well, what, what's a load what the of brilliant us out. thing about having enough. more people, uh, more more thinkers, more brains, more scientists means that we can mechanise. We can move to agriculture to to mechanised agriculture. That's meant that we can support far more people. It means that we can invent medicines that deal with things yeah, like Spanish flu. We can't even house the this people is... we've got. Why do we want so many more people? So, so we, we we can actually. I think there are big big failings in housing in this country in terms of the way that we're. 
Boris fix it? Um, I think Boris could fix it if he follows, for example, the positions of Liz Truss, the new International mm. Trade Secretary, who has set out a big plan in terms of how to deal with housing, in terms of the government actually prevents a lot of housing being built to preserve um, parts of land that actually aren't right. even that beautiful. Let's bring David in, because you're a local councillor, David, and uh, the people who stop a lot of houses being built are local councils, aren't they? Well, um, people put planning applications in and they have to be uh, looked at on their own merit. And obviously, you know, people have children. We've just been talking about having children. And they are going to need homes to live in. So we're going to have to build homes. And, uh, and I don't think the immigration uh, thing is uh, it pushes it up, makes it a bit harder to get housing as well. Two but children per family? They should bring a law in like no, they did in no, China. No, think, they only had one in no. China, wasn't it? We, they've taken enough of our civil liberties, you know, over the years, governments. So yeah, but don't you think you have to be able to afford to have children? If you're going to have children, you should just churn them out and expect someone else to pay for them. Are you them. going to get on to the, the dementia debate later about who you live in one I house? Wasn't. And no, who's no, going no, to pay no, for no. It I wasn't going to do that. that. I was just going to keep it with Harry and Meghan yeah. for the time so I think being. The key point here is the reason that they meant they said that they were going to have two children is <clears> because they were worried about climate change. They were worried about the question of population and climate change. I think while it's really good that we are taking climate change seriously, the government declared a national emergency, a national climate emergency, which is exactly what it is. I think it's important to look at how actually we should be looking at climate change not as just a series of behavioural personal changes, but systemic changes. You're right in that we do have enough um, food, we do have enough land, we do have enough to, to feed and house um, a growing population, but we have an economic and political system that hoards all of those resources for the few at the expense of the many. So I would be interested in how an AOC in the US brought in the Green New Deal to do precisely this, in how we can rewire our economic system to face this new challenge in a way that is for the many and not the few. But in the main... In the meantime, perhaps if people just had a couple of kids rather than four or five, be better, wouldn't it? I mean, there will have to be some lifestyle changes. We won't be able to eat meat at the level that we're eating in order to, you know, if we're going to re retain... Um, De like the in degree increases below um, 1.5 degrees. We are going to have to, you know, move from privately owned cars to better public transport. So there will have so to be lifestyle changes, but it's about, not about actually cars just down and meat to that. And all of the things that you raise here is that we're now moving to a situation where you can get a synthetic burger that's real meat, but hasn't been grown with a brain and consciousness and all the things that come with an animal. You can grow meat in a lab. It now is quite expensive, but the price is tumbling. In a decade, we will be eating mostly synthetic meat. What do you think about that? We'll David? have electric cars. All of the liberties enough. that we enjoy no, today will be Tom. so much more like different. Have you had one, Tom? I haven't, but I would love to have one. Oh, you'd love to have one? Okay. Well, well I know I somebody. I suppose if I didn't know the difference, what would it matter? It's real it meat. Yeah. But no animals having its throat slit to provide it. That must be good, that's mustn't it? Well, that's, that's why good. we should yeah. be harnessing technological development, exactly. not for profit and oh, not no. for private profit private interests. Well, who's going to pay development? It's the difference between the North internet, and South Korea. It's the, the difference between... The biggest I mean, technological developments we've had have actually been state-invested no, because no, they no, no, rely no, no, on long-term no. investment the reason the societies, the re short-term The reason the societies that have the technology and the investment are more capitalist... Stand up for the older person, David. Come on. When you look at the big developments like the internet for example that was as a result of state invested development no. and research well, that was done in the we military were about burgers, no. by private <laughs> <laughs> state investment about the and internet. you know about burgers i did i sold them yes yeah and they were very popular uh, and people used to scorn me for it why well i just thought it was a, a great fall from uh, you know from a pop star down to selling in a burger van burger van day burger Burger yeah. Van Dyke. But oh, I have to remind you, millions of burgers are yeah. billions of burgers are sold around the world every day. You're a capitalist, aren't you? I can tell. Well, I think people should be able to <laughs> get on in their life and keep their money and spend it the way they want. And uh, Dahlia and wouldn't uh, agree with that. No, uh, no, with Corbyn. Okay, it was, uh, it, Ricky, what's going on? Well, there's a lot of people that have echoed that thought about David. A lot of people have uh, made the point that he used to sell burgers. So th thank you, everyone, that's uh, let me know about that. Uh, we've got a couple of quick ones here. from One from Helmet who says, Great, stop the royals breeding in relation to their environmental concerns. I suggest he might be a Republican. And gig video There's no is place for Republicans on this show, please. OK. I uh, won't say anything. Fine, right. OK. Uh, gig video has said, uh, Prince Harry has gone weird since he married, which I can actually agree with. He has got really quite weird. Uh, this is a good one for you, James, actually. This is from Martin Crump, who said on Facebook, James Whale announces he is no longer a Remainer and thinks the best thing we can do is leave. After all this time watching the European election farce <coughs> and how undemocratic it all was, is he now going to issue us an apology? No. 
We should never have decided to leave. David Cameron did this country a huge disservice because it was a complete mess, the referendum. But I have watched the debates, listened to the arguments over the years, and I have decided that probably being a part of the European Union at the moment isn't doing anybody any good. I took it to a friend of mine in France the other day, just a normal guy, works in France, works in a pharmacy in France, and they and he, his friends in the, in the uh, cafe down the road all talking about they want to leave as well. Everybody wants to leave, and then maybe we can start a new union with some better rules rules and regulations. I don't know. But, you know, the thing is, we're always allowed to change our minds. The other thing is, you know, the royal family have done great service to this country. I have never met a happy Republican. I wonder why. Sorry, David, yes? Have you ever performed for the royals? Uh, yes, I have, actually. Uh, um, the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, Prince of Wales, um, maybe a few others. All right. Have you ever mother. sung for Alexa? Mm -hmm. Uh, what, in my kitchen? Yeah. I've got an Alexa, yeah. yeah. You've got an Alexa? Yeah. I don't even have one. They had to but, tell me what it was. Yeah, but pe people what? say they're spying on us, don't they? Yeah, but apparently if you're having, uh, if you, it's over here, look. It's looking at us if you're kissing. Is that, is that and, in the kitchen, you know, And well, wherever, I don't know where you <laughs> do that sort of thing. They're listening into you. Uh, I don't have one. I mean, mm. what's the point? Why do you want to tell it to, why can't you go and put the lights on yourself? I sometimes, uh, you know, I, I ask them who I am. It's quite fun. Well, yeah, I know. Right? You're, you'll get into that <laughs> age where you forget. I understand that. <laughs> Dahlia. I mean, this is a <laughs> this is a like you're long, allowed to laugh. This is a long, long um, riding thing about technology, and I think this is also why. And I think sometimes we can get really scared of technology and want to kind of be very sort of um, what's the word um, puritanical about it. And I think rather than that, we should be looking at how we can harness technology in order to make us in order to. Um, be liberatory rather than sort of being <clears throat> held and controlled by a very few number of very, very rich people. And I think that's where we see these kinds of decisions of like, because essentially the reason that they want to record you is so that they can know what you want so that they can sell you stuff. But there's a couple apparently, according to the Sun newspaper anyway, in Romania, who've been listening to Brits arguing and having sex. Well, well, maybe that, Romania, yeah. they don't have much fun. <laughs> That's the problem with these kinds of, is that the, the corporations will tell you this is very secure, etc. but all it takes is a good hacker, and it's all, and then it's we, all out in the open. They could reprogram me. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you're very quiet. Do you not do Alexa? I actually bought one just two weeks ago, but I don't have it in my bedroom. It's in my living room, and I think that that makes all the difference. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about the sort of inane chatter I have about Love Island uh, in my living room. You don't? Uh, do you watch more Love Island, Tom? I do, yeah. You are a political comic, darling. Do you watch Love Island? Of course Love? I do. My <laughs> God! <laughs> no, there are normal what? people no, in politics. No, no, cool. this is, yeah? no, no, don't go there. I don't, no, I don't watch that. Hang on, I you was... appeared on Big Brother, and you no, don't watch. I, I did. I, I'm a celebrity. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I did Big Brother. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Yeah. OK, we're getting old. Uh, Ricky. Hello. <laughs> no, Ricky, yeah. anything you can read out or is it all still rather well, rude? Well, there's still a lot of people trying to work out whether they are racists and whether uh, you can be a white supremacist and be racist or the other way around. It's, it's getting very, uh, well, just weird and sad, actually, across a lot of them. However, Harry Webb says he supports the burger guy, which is uh, always nice to see. Thanks, you, Harry. <laughs> All right, uh, you're over uh, there. A very quick one, um, James. A few people have been asking, why is this on tonight and not on Friday? Um, um, we, like to, we, we like to just keep it, you know, right. moving around. It could be a Monday, it could be a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday. It what's could be, what's it, it going to be, be next week? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. What would you like? Well, Any I, of you guys free any particular day next week? I'm afraid I'm on holiday next week, so it'll be so really... Oh, um, darling. I'm, no. I'm afraid I have three jobs, so I can't, don't have time. Well, that, how <laughs> can you have three jobs when there are people who need jobs? Because that's what I need to pay my rent. <laughs> Gosh. Um, David, what are you doing? I'm, I'm doing my Prince Charles. Oh, thinking. right, OK, fine. You're a Tory man. How so would you feel about Brexit? Yeah, I'm a lever, um, and I want to make our own laws. And I don't want to be told... Well, we do make our own laws, don't we? No, no, they do. Over in Europe, they do. Over in Brussels. Tell me one law they make in Brussels that we change. 
Uh, well, um, no, you can't because session. nobody else can. No, what? There are really loads. There are what? Loads. Go on. Well, everything from how uh, agriculture is regulated, the common agricultural policy, <laughs> the tariffs that are slapped <laughs> onto our exports. <laughs> the, I, was say I mean, that. The, I mean the, 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 there's a whole host of domestic regulation <laughs> that is decided in Brussels. But what's really interesting, we're not going to change. Really what's matters. really, really interesting about this is Theresa May's withdrawal agreement, which is universally loathed by leave by people who voted leave. Mm. The thing it takes back control over is migration. Theresa May's withdrawal agreement keeps us having EU laws coming and being imposed on us, but we control migration. And it turns out leavers don't like that. So what I find really interesting about that is clearly, evidently, patently, the leave vote wasn't only about migration, it was about taking back control over our lawmaking system. And, and if, if people only cared about migration, mm. and that was the only thing they cared about, we'd have passed that withdrawal Shouldn't agreement. Shouldn't we actually have explained it to us all better in the first place? When in the run-up to the referendum, shouldn't it all have been explained in a much more detailed and better way? Well, I think it was a very bad referendum because normally in a referendum, having the options being just yes and no, normally for the alternative to what you're voting, for the, in, in the alternative system, that's something that's much more laid out and much more detailed. As you mentioned, David Cameron absolutely made a complete mess of it. It was a very bad, like any political scientist would tear that referendum apart. I think also a problem with the campaigning was that it was so contradictory. When you look at the Leave campaign, there were some people saying, of course, we'll stay in the single market. There were other people saying, we won't, we won't stay in the single market. You had Danny Hanan saying, we will. You have Boris well, you, Johnson saying, we won't. You have, there was almost virtually no clear line on the customs union and it's That's the same not true. and it's the same with the remain campaign the remain campaign was also full of contradictions and run by elites that are think completely you're out of touch. The truth, so the, the the vote leave campaign was incredibly clear. There are some quotes that the that the second referendum campaign mm. tries to pull up from what people said in 2012 and 2013. But during the campaign, there was a very very clear line on every debate, in every television interview, in it every press release, in every poster. To. We're leaving the it single market. Who you were we're leaving to. the customs union. Look, the official designated campaign was actually criticised by the there, Remain campaign for having such a clear line on this. The Irish problem, border? absolutely. The problem that came about after Was Brexit is the hang on. The, the problem border? that Guys, came I, I hate to absolutely. interrupt but, this, but I have to take a commercial break. So if you hold that thought, <laughs> we, will. Uh, we will come back in a moment. We're going to talk about uh, any of you religious. Talk a bit about religion when we come back. That'll set people going. And golf, religion, and golf. And we'll go over to Ricky and see if he's found anything useful to tell us about. You can get in touch. YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook Live. Uh, go on there and tell us what you think about some of the stories we've been talking about in James Well Breaks the News on talk radio and on TV.
Uh, very good evening to you. Welcome back to the final part of James Well Breaks the News, a programme that you can see pop up on your TV screens on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and all kinds of other places as well. Um, what I thought we'd do for the final part is our roving reporter, Ricky, who's going through some of the very strange and unusual... Uh, um, uh, one even very worried that Dahlia has three jobs, but, you know, hey, if she could get three jobs, good luck to her. You know, uh, we all have to go out there and work wherever we can. I know that Tom and David also uh, do more than one job. As for me, I'm all over the place. Anyway, uh, if you want to make a comment, you can uh, get in touch with us in the usual ways. Facebook, Twitter and uh, YouTube. Now, I'd like to know if there's anybody out there who's got any questions for David Van Day, because it may well be some considerable time since you've seen David Van Day. One person got in touch this evening and said, that's not David Van Day, he's a lot younger than that, which I thought was really hurtful, because they say that about me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think people should know. In, back in the, in the uh, 70s and 80s, David couldn't walk down the street without being screamed at. Couldn't Could walk he? down the street. It's only to laugh, <laughs> you two, just because, you know... You're... I mean, David was... What was what's the equivalent today of you, I wonder? I Justin saw... Bieber? No, that's a, he's a bit old fat. Nobody talks about Justin Bieber anymore, do they? Um, I don't think I ever talked about Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> Who's I don't your know, favourite, I mean, The reality stars are, are from the Love Islands are, are much like the new pop stars, aren't they? Are they? They get a lot of attention. What is it about? I mean, I've I mean, never watched it. Have you? I've never watched it. No. Why don't? I've seen why clips don't? Of it. Why don't these TV people put together a Love Island for old people like us? <laughs> would you not think that would be good? Well, they, they would have to iron us first. I, <laughs> you speak for yourself. <laughs> I've got. I've got a, 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 a title for it. What have you got? Pensioners Paradise. That's great. What? That'll go. Channel yeah? Four. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> would you go on the first one? Uh, I'm not quite a pensioner yet. Am no, I? well, we no, call no, it Pensioner's three or four Paradise. Years, yeah. You've got a few wrinkles. You're okay. I like the Marigold Hotel. That's pretty good fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's do that. Yeah. yeah. I don't, you're laughing over you. Very no, serious. Very serious. Really, 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 they it's, just want us to get show. us out of the way. No, it's a good show <laughs> because it's like a microscope into like the everyday relationships of pe- that hmm. people have. And like that's interesting regardless of like your age or sexuality or anything. Like, Would you go on it? I don't think I've got the body for it. <laughs> you, have you have to, to be to, like... Do you have to have a body? I mean, I haven't seen it, so I can't they're say. They're all, but. like, model beautiful. Well, I, actually, <laughs> there were a couple in talking to Dan Wooten on the radio the other day, and they were really small and fairly insignificant. So maybe the TV does a lot about... I mean, they weren't very big. Well, who says maybe. the camera never lies, you see? Yeah. Sorry? The camera never lies, yeah. but it does. Tom's <laughs> saying nothing. really depressing about it. What? Some of them are 19 and 20 years old, and they, and they are, like, have these sort of bodybuilder bodies, and they're out on TV, super famous, and it's like, oh, God, that was... That, I, that, they're, they're, what, like, in their late teens and early yeah. 20s? Yeah, it's, really it's very It's very disorientating. What's yeah. up at 21? I <laughs> want <laughs> <Not> a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you play golf? I don't, unless Good. you count crazy golf. Right, OK, we're going to talk about it. Do you play golf? No, I, I don't like golf clubs. No. I, mean, I think, I think the, it's like a school, going back to, you know, it's too many yeah. rules. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't like golf, I it seems a go. waste of a good walk. OK, yeah. uh, uh, now, there is... No, a so there was Dr Johnson. I, I, said, oh. I used to go on to driving ranges with my ex-boyfriend for dates all the time. Yeah, but he's your closest. ex-boyfriend, does that say something about I golf? I actually really, really enjoyed it. It's one of my best memories of him. Really? Yeah, I ah. loved it. Okay. It's a good way to get aggression out. Is this out. your ex? <laughs> no. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. He'd never be in a church. 
Oh, right. Okay, fine. <laughs> He's a hard, well, that's, that's strident quite, atheist. <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite interesting uh, because Rochester Cathedral. Uh, Rochester, a time where, uh, or a town, a city, is it? Rochester must be a city if it's, it's got a cathedral. Kent. It's in Kenya, it's yeah. in the Midway Towns. And uh, that's where, um, you know, who was, a, who was the guy who wrote all the, uh, the, the, the novels? Charles Dickens. Dickens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Charles Dickens yeah, hung Charles out Dickens. there a lot. Yeah, it was 2014 by election as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mark Reckless is. Well, uh, that's right. Mark Reckless, who then went on to UKIP. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Now, uh, the cathedral has installed a crazy golf course and lots of. <coughs> It's one way to get them in, I suppose. Well, no, that's it. And people are complaining and saying, holy. hang on. <laughs> oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Holy, I just come to mind. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're complaining that it's just a way of getting people in and then trying to convert them to Christianity. Well, that's not a bad idea. If they, if they think that they can bring them in and score a you know, hole in one. We don't need any more religion, surely. Well, um, You're not religious. Uh, no, I've, I've, I've I went to your think, wedding, your second wedding. Uh, that well, wasn't very religious, from what I remember. Uh, well, I was spiritual, you see. You know, it wasn't very spiritual <laughs> either. <laughs> but uh, what it was, um, yeah, it anyway, was fun fine, anyway. Yeah. There was lots of spirits there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So there's, there's nothing wrong with religious institutions trying to invite people no. in of any denomination. That's fine. That's up to them. And I mean, if people go in and they like it, they might want to join. <clears> they might not. <throat> it's up to them. But actually, they're providing a cool service for the community, and that's fun. And in the same way that some secular institutions try and draw people in, try and draw in business, compete for people's time and attention, that's what makes good society. That's what delivers entertainment. That's what deliver values, uh, delivers value for people's lives. So I think it's a thoroughly good thing. Church? What? Scientology. Does Scientology it? got a golf course. Uh, <laughs> they'll get well, it's certainly now. crazy. I'm not sure about golf. There's yeah. quite a lot of entertainers yeah. who probably play golf. They're tricking people into finding God. I don't think that's it's what tricking. critics think, are saying. They're being more, tricked into finding God. I think what finding I find God. interesting is that one thing, and especially like, sorry to bring politics into it, but one thing that happened with austerity is that so many of these institutions of community building, like youth centres and stuff like that, things that you could go and socialise and hang out with people that were different to you for free and you didn't have to pay, you didn't have to like buy anything. That has collapsed, and I think that, you know, this is the church trying to kind of fill that gap. I just mm. wish that it didn't have to be tied to a religion. I wish that you could just be anyone and, like, mm. and, and, have a partic and participate in that. Are you religious or not? Uh, no, not particularly. No. Not, are you, no. Tom? I'm not particularly, but I do think that it's good. What is not different particularly, religious... Tom? I, I mean, don't know. I mean, I go to I aren't. go to church at Christmas. What for? Do I go to church the rest of the, to the rest of the year? Why no. do you go at Christmas? It's sort of tradition. It's kind oh, of right, nice. Okay. Would I you like get married songs. in church? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. I wouldn't, but there we are. Uh, David? You wouldn't be able to. You've already been married. Oh, OK, fine. <laughs> All right. Anyway, shall we it's move on to another thing that's uh, causing quite a lot of controversy? Uh, atheist parents, OK, in a primary school. This isn't... There's the other one about the uh, demonstrators about their children being taught about gay issues, which, of course, is just ridiculous. Um, not the teaching of them, the people complaining. Uh, but this is in Oxfordshire, in a primary school in Burford in Oxfordshire. And the parents are complaining that their children shouldn't have to sing hymns or listen to prayers in assembly uh, because it's against their human rights. They claim the primary school is introducing them with Bible stories such as the crucifixion when their children started. It has no religious charter. And I would agree with this, uh, the parents. 80% of young people in this country now are not religious. Why do we keep on, through institutions, going on and on and on about this stuff? Well, Tom said it. It's traditional, isn't it, Tom? Right, right. And, and uh, that's it, is it? Well, I mean, what harm does it do? Well, I think it does quite a lot of harm, because I went to a church school, and until I was about 12, I thought the Bible was a historical document. I didn't realise it was just a load of stuff people had written. Right, that's what one extreme. And no truth yeah. I think there's most a happy middle ground here in between mm. uh, te teaching the Bible as a, as a literal word of God and, and, and as a historical document, which I think very few people do these days, and ignoring it completely. Yeah, but why I mean, would, why I, would as you a, want... As a school child, I didn't yeah. particularly appreciate being forced to sing all these hymns, but now looking back, it's sort of, oh, that was a, a, a useful part of cultural upbringing, and I'm quite glad that I sort of was, was forced slogans, to go through it? this sort of stuff. That, I, I, the I think that, the, you know, to talk of it as violation of human rights is maybe a bit extreme, mm. but I do think that I, I can't, I don't think there is a good reason why... Mm. 
children who will come from all kinds of religious backgrounds, including no religious background, should feel that they have to participate in something in order to be part of the school community. There's no reason why we can't have songs and make new traditions that don't tie themselves to a particular religion. I think you're absolutely right. I agree with you. Should we abolish I, the national anthem then? Which yeah, does tie yeah. us down. Now, hang on. This is a great rubbish. one. <laughs> this is a great one. We should one change because, it to Jerusalem, which hang, is a much yeah. better box. Ooh, that's now, very I agree. With, that's that's <laughs> quite good. I think the national anthem, uh, sorry, ma'am, because I'm a big royalist. I think the royal family do a great deal for this. This is part of our country. Um, but I think our national anthem is one of the biggest dirges of any. And by the way, the English flag sucks. I don't like it at all. Oh, I, don't I, know. Think, I think, the, I think the it's a red. Great. No, we want to go back to the flag. Pre I mean, the, yeah. No, no. Bef that's the United Kingdom. Keep, okay. Yeah, keep well, up. Yeah. Right. OK. No, we want to go to the one before the Crusades, which was, was three that? lions. Uh, and that's what we want to go back to that. Yeah. 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 I mean, a red cross. And the Crusades is nothing for this country to be uh, proud about, is it, really? No, but a red cross, you want a flag that a child can draw. You want it to be instantly recognisable. And I think that's what's quite nice and unique about it. I wonder if we've got time to see if anybody out there agrees that we need a new flag for England. <laughs> a new fa What do you think, Dahlia? You're sort of, um, do you not like flags? I just don't care. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But what would the footballers really do? You know, yeah. I mean, around do what you want. Like. Well, the footballers do both. Yeah. South Essex, you know, driving around there, if there's a World Cup on, they've all got uh, England flags hanging out the cars. Yeah. It's a very popular. Although well, they do sing See, the three Welsh lines flag, on shirt, so... oh, I'm half Welsh, the Welsh flag is really nice. Oh, that it's rubbish. Dr no, I'll... I can't draw I that beg for your life pardon? of me. I'm a quarter Welsh, but I can't <laughs> draw it at all, and I think that's Why a really important thing Why do you need to be on the truck? You can't draw the Union Jack, can yes, you? Yes, you what can. Yeah, you can give it a good stab. Is it? Yeah. Is it a dragon you've got? Yeah. Mm. Okay. The dragon's hard. A dragon very takes hard. artistic skill. I was going to draw a dragon <laughs> you talk amongst yourselves, and I'll draw the dragon before the oh, end of the show. Uh, we want fire Brilliant. coming out of this one. You want fire coming sure, out of this one. I want the Welsh one. flag done to perfection. Um, Ricky? Would you like some social media? Yes, go on, Ricky. Well, I do the dragon in your spare time. I do the dragon. Okay, I'll right, here we on. go. Okay. I, I should have a lot of people are concerned what I'm watching uh, on this laptop, and I can confirm you're right. It's Coronation Street. Don't worry about it. Uh, Heather says, church keeps kids busy and out of trouble. And my personal view on this is, why limit this just to crazy golf? I think we should bring this out to, to Laser Quest, mm. to darts. The whole lot. What about a bit of archery? Could I have an archery yeah, lane? Yeah, you could. Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, you know, yeah. That's a good way to use it. Uh, Antimony Cup says we should protect children from religious indoctrination from schools and parents. Religion should be strictly for adults, like porn and smoking. Uh, and we've got a question here from Alexander Skates. Uh, this is a question for David. He asks. How are local councils breaking barriers for full fibre broadband rollout across the UK as Boris had promised by 2025? How, how are they doing that, David? Yeah. Yes, David. I, how I, are... I, I'll tell you. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been money... Um, yeah. money devoted to it and yeah. it's, it's being rolled out as we speak plans are being drawn up I think what's quite interesting about this administration is that things are happening from day one it was Theresa May said a lot of problems when she became Prime Minister when Boris Johnson became Prime Minister he offered solutions they're recruiting 20,000 more police they're, they're rolling That's out right. fibre broadband um, there's more money going into education there's lots of things that are happening <clears throat> from day one which I find quite exciting and we run Catholic Council with a surplus right OK how about that we've and almost we come we we've we've Rose the council tax this year as well. We've almost come <laughs> to the... <laughs> that, is, I mean, that is quite That's something. Like, is it a rabbit being That's sick? <laughs> <laughs> We've it's, wow. it's almost you come to the bit. end of the programme. <laughs> right, what? Yeah, you've got a little loss of profession there. You should have, you know. <laughs> Tom, Dahlia, Dave, thank you very much indeed for coming in and joining thank us. You. Come in, come in you. again and uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We'll get sort of reasonably regular panellists on the show and you can set the questions or you can come up with the uh, topics we're going to talk about maybe next time you come in. Okay. Um, we'll be back on the radio after the news coming up at 8 o'clock. Uh, but here's my final thought for the evening and they said like those other famous broadcasters maybe you should sum it up in some way and it seems to me that we now live in this really uh, unusual time where nobody likes to insult anybody everybody has to be nice to everyone if you start talking to people in the wrong way they rush to HR or complain you're bullying them or whatever else yet we live in a fairly fairly violent time you know violent crime knife crime and various other robberies are, are, are 
out of control. Um, and it seems to me, and then we go talking about, you know, people are religious or not and everything else. If we could only sort of just focus on this life and focus on actually trying to make life better for all of us now rather than thinking about other things and, you know, we'd all get on a lot better, wouldn't we? We'd all actually, we'd all make a little more of our lives. We'd make it, what? Are you becoming a snowflake? <laughs> Do you think that's <laughs> snowflakeish? I don't think it is. Yeah, I think it's actually. If I say to you, look, for an old bloke, you're not looking bad. You wouldn't get offended by that, would I you? I would. No, but no. You know, somebody could pick up on it. Might. Yeah. Well, Which, that's, that's my point. That's my point. Yeah. I think you should go out from wherever you are today and just do a random act of kindness. Just say to somebody, do you know, David, your hair looks really good like that. It doesn't have to be David's hair. It can be anybody's. I'll see you after the news on the radio on Talk Radio. Thank you for watching.